good evening to everyone. First of all, I like to thank all our national, international guest faculties as well as our delegates for uh, being here and helping us make uh, Trico a very educational and interesting program, just like we de we do it every year. So today I'm going to present a talk on uh, cardiovascular and ASCVD risk prevention, a new molecule which we have called Inclisiran. It is uh, the first FDA approved SIRNA based LDL cholesterol lowering molecule. So if we look at the history and uh, the incidence of cardiovascular disease, the burden of clinical ASCVD is still very high. Every 60 seconds, 34 people die worldwide due to a, a myocardial infarction or a stroke. These patients with, who already have an established uh, clinical ASCVD are also at a very high risk of recurrence. After the first index myocardial infarction, there is a six times increased risk of a recurrent myocardial infarction. And similarly, after the first stroke, there is a nine times increased risk of a recurrent stroke. So we have to think about secondary prevention for these cases to prevent uh, a recurrent ASCVD, revascularization, as well as mortality. This is a very interesting slide about how LDL level and duration of LDL exposure affects the plaque burden. This was published in Jack in 2018. Uh, this formula uh, multiplies the LDL cholesterol level in milligram with uh, time duration of that exposure in years and gives the total estimated plaque burden inside the vasculature. On long term follow up, it has been observed that risk of myocardial infarction doubles for every uh, 1,250 incremental increase in plaque burden measured in milligram years. This burden ultimately depends on the cumulative LDL exposure over a period of time. So not just the baseline LDL cholesterol level, but also the duration of exposure to a high LDL level affects the total plaque burden and the overall outcome. When we talk about LDL cholesterol, it is well known that LDL is a major risk marker as well as uh, we have found that lowering LDL improves outcomes, reduces mortality and prevents recurrent ASCVD. But we cannot achieve the goal in all our patients. In the Da Vinci study, it has been found that amongst all the patients in the population, only 33% reached their risk-based goal based on the current therapies available. And out of patients with established ASCVD who are already at a high, high risk of recurrence, only 18% were able to achieve their uh, goal LDL levels. These goals were based on the ESC guidelines, which are more stringent and target uh, LDL level uh, lowering up to and below 55 milligram per deciliter. The factors which are associated with not achieving the target LDL uh, some of them include lack of familiarity of healthcare providers with the guidelines, cost, uh, lack of uh, patient, uh, uh, lack of patient ex acceptance due to known or unknown statin-related adverse effects, and patient reluctance to take high-intensity statins. So poor adherence to statins and LDL cholesterol lowering medications have been associated with significantly increased risk of coronary event, any cardiovascular event, death, MI, as well as stroke. So Inclisiran is a new molecule. It is a uh, small interfering RNA therapy that actually acts on the PCSK9 enzyme. Uh, we have PCSK9 inhibitors like uh, evolocumab and erilocumab, which are designed to directly inhibit the PCSK9 uh, enzyme, and they prevent the degradation of LDL receptors, increasing the availability of LDL receptors on the liver surface, and uh, thus reducing the LDL levels by in increasing the metabolism. The drawbacks of uh, PCSK9 inhibitors include the frequency of the dosing. You have to take 
two doses per month which translates to 24 doses per year and compared to that if we look at incliseran the mechanism remains the same but the duration lasts much longer incliseran has to be taken uh, on day zero the second booster dose is on the third month and then every six months after that cholesterol lowering is almost as good as pcsk9 inhibitors even on patients on a maximum tolerated dose of statins there is additive 50 percent reduction in ldl after initiation of the uh, incliseran if we look at the LDL reduction over a long period of time uh, when uh, after, after the conclusion of all the Orion trials, even after the maximum tolerated dose of statin, the maximum dose which uh, maximum levels which were reduced with incliseran were up to 54 percent compared to placebo. Apart from LDL, incliseran also reduced total cholesterol, non-HDL cholesterol, APOB, and there was also a 20% reduction in LPA levels. In the adverse effects, uh, there were no significant adverse effects compared to placebo. The only important adverse effects that have been found in last seven years include some injection site reactions, bronchitis, and some uh, upper respiratory tract infections. Uh, Long-term safety and efficacy have been found in Orion 8. Uh, even at the end of uh, a follow-up of four and a half years, there were no significant adverse effect which lead to cessation of treatment. Um, another trials ongoing are the extension of the Orion trials, which are looking at the long-term data and long-term adverse effect of this medication. If we look at the current guidelines, then incliseran is at present recommended as an alternative to PCSK9 inhibitors in patients who are not able to achieve the target LDL goal despite being on maximum tolerated statins as well as azetimibe therapy. So you can select between incliseran or PCSK9 inhibitor to reach your target LDL goal. So to summarize the uh, advantages of this molecule are that uh, there is only twice yearly maintenance dosing schedule. So it reduces the pill burden as well as the uh, uh, injection burden if you convert, uh, compare it with uh, statins and PCSK9 inhibitors. That safety profile is good, they are well tolerated and the LDL reduction uh, sustained, uh, is sustained and remains there for a long period of time. It is actually a hit and run drug which gets eliminated from the body within 48 hours of the injection and the effect of the drug lasts for almost one and a half year but uh, 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 all, uh, the additional booster doses are required every six months to maintain the 50 percent reduction in LDL. The key message is that two maintenance doses of incliseran per year in patients who are indicated uh, for uh, further LDL reduction effect, uh, achieves effective and sustained LDL reduction with a well-tolerated safety profile as a complement and not as an alternative to maximum tolerated statins or it could be used as a monotherapy only for statin intolerant patients. Thank you. If uh, no questions, it's last, last speaker, uh, Girish Godbaul. One quick please. question for Aman, if I could uh, ask please, him. Yeah. So Aman, where do you think Inquisran fits in in our Indian landscape of secondary prevention uh, with the given benefits of the compliance and the great efficacy? So in India, we see that most of the patients respond very well to statins. Even at a very low dose, we are able to achieve the target LDL levels. And when we add azetimibe to a statin, almost 80 to 90 percent of our patients reach a good LDL cholesterol level. But there are a, su a subgroup of patients with familial hypercholesterolemia who are not able to achieve uh, the targets, and they come back with recurrent ASCVD events. So they seem to be the ideal target population at the moment. Uh, yeah, the, the adherence also increases over time, yes. Thank you.